ஓகே ஸோ குட் மார்னிங் ஐ வாண்ட் டு டாக் அபவுட் பஸ்ட் ஆஃப் டமன் அஸ் அ டுடேஸ் டாபிக் ஸோ ஓன் டிகிசன்ஸ் ஓன் டிகிசன்ஸ் இஸ் டிஸ்கிரிப்ஷன் ஆஃப் அ எனி பார்ட் ஆஃப் த பாடி இட்ஸ் இன்வால்விங் ஆல் த லேயர்ஸ் ஓகே மே அக்கர் அண்ட் அப் டு த்ரீ பர்சன்டேஜ் ஆஃப் த அப்டமன் ஊண்ட் அண்ட் இட் இஸ் வெரி டிஸ்ட்ரெஸ்ஸிங் டு த பேஷண்ட் So this is a picture showing a bust abdomen. So wound degisons. So it's a open wound after post-op complication. So there might be a different causes for bust abdomen. So bust abdomen partial or complete post-operative separation of the abdomen wound closure. the protection of the normal abdomen content abdomen content either be omentum or intestine any contents okay so which is the most common time period for a bust abdomen the most common time period is will be happening between 5th to 8th post operative day okay okay so suturing opposing the deep layers peritoneum rectus sheath tear through the the whole abdomen layers okay it will be causing as a bust abdomen look you can see the abdomen content protruding outside and you can visibly see the there is no skin or any layer above the intestine so it got opened so causing in wound degisons Hmm. So, what are the predisposing factors? So, any pre-operative, it will be divided into pre-operative, operative and post-operative. Okay. So, what are the factors causing pre-operative causes of wound degisons or bust abdomen? Okay. Reliability and malnutrition. Okay. Okay. preoperatively if the patient is having hypoproteinemia it can develop a post operative wound degisons vitamin c deficiency hey the patient is having any renal failure any prone pre malignant disease or malignant disease which is already the patient is suffering from can cause a wound degisons okay the patient is having any um, arthritis any rheumatoid arthritis or as a patient is having any cml aml any prolonged steroid therapy okay will be causing a post operative degisons obese patient there will be excess secretions of the abdomen wall will be causing you and post operative bust abdomen jaundice okay so or the patient is having any chronic cough that will causing the increase in the intra abdominal pressure which can prone for your wound degisons vomiting okay any bladder neck obstruction which will also cause your intra abdominal pressure which will affect your post operative wound okay these are the pre operative risk factors for wound degisons so what are the operative techniques what are the operative factors any faulty technique okay failure to use a non absorbable suture okay when you are closing your abdomen wound the rectus sheath should be closed with a proline suture number 1 or 10 the failure to control persistent leakage of pancreatic enzyme in case of pancreatic trauma pancreatitis or duodenal blowout so when there is a leakage okay if you are doing a um, entire surgeries okay if there is a leakage injury to trauma to the pancreas be causing you a irritation irritation of the pancreatic juice will cause you a bust up down post operatively failure to avoid factors which predispose to wound infection okay intraoperatively and i want to maintain a sterile technique okay okay failure to decompose the bowel crossly due to the presence of obstruction whenever you want to intraoperatively any dilated obstructive case you want to reduce the air or the contents should pass to via the 
the large intestine. Okay, so if there is a grassly distended bowel, you can't be able to close your abdomen wall. So it will be causing you a distended abdomen where your sutures won't be placed properly. Okay. Damage to the motor nerve after subcostal or pararectal incision. Okay. Subcostal or pararectal incision are more prone for wound adhesions. Inadequate or poor closure of the wound. Okay. You are not closing your wound properly or with a proper technique. There might be a large chances of developing a wound adhesions. Okay. What are the different types of incisions? Okay. The first one is vertical and transverse incisions. Okay. So, what happens if there is a uh, exploratory laparotomy? You are going for a midline incision, vertical incision. Okay. So, there will be a contraction. There will be direct tension will be there on the closure of the abdomen. So, what are the closure? There are two types of closure is there. One type is mass closure and one is layer closure. Okay. Mass closure, what you will do, you will to try to take the all the layers in a single bite. So, you want to take the rectus, anterior rectus, posterior rectus and muscle, peritoneum in a single bite. So, you want to try the mass closure. Whereas, a layer closure, you will be closing with an individual layer. Okay. So, uh, you will be closing the rectus separately. You will be closing your um, muscle approximation and subcutaneous also. So, that is a layer closure. The incidence of burst of abdomen is more in layered closure compared to mass closure. Okay. Then the technique is in, in technique, interrupted technique and continuous technique. Can do an interrupted suture also and continuous suture also. So, interrupted suturing has low incidence of uh, burst. Because of if there is a continuous suture, if there is a one suture is got loosed, okay, there will be the total layer will be avulsed. So, whereas an interrupted suture, even the one suture is removed or it's not intact, the other suture will be stayed intact. So, the incidence of burst abdomen is comparatively lower in case of interrupted sutures, okay. What is peritoneal closure or not? There is the suturing of peritoneal is not vital. Okay, it's a uh, easily epithelizing line. If you, uh, we don't want to suture the peritoneum, it will automatically heal itself. So whereas in other layers, you want to close in a meticulous technique. So these are the layer closure. Whereas in the mass abdomen, mass closure, there is a you are taking every layer: anterior, posterior, subcutaneous, peritoneum. In the last D picture, whereas in layered, you are taking everything in a single single layer. Okay, so you want to the layered suture technique. So interrupted technique. So you will suture the each individual layer with the interrupted the single single bite. Okay, that is interrupted suturing, which is in this in this figure four point five. Whereas in continuous suturing, you will be closing. You will be tying the first knot and you will throw the suture continuously till the end of the wound. That is your continuous suture technique. So, what is the post-operative risk factors for wound degisons? The persistence of post-operative risk factor, pre-operative risk factors. Okay. The patient can develop wound hematoma. The patient can develop wound infection. Okay. The wound hematoma. Well, how happens? Uh, there is any serious collection in the in between your subcutaneous layer. Okay. Any wound infection post-operatively. Okay. Any wound infection affecting the wound can disturb your total suturing and it can cause a burst abdomen. So this here, this is the part you can see the burst abdomen where the intestine is clearly visible and there is no skin or any layers above the covering layers above the intestine so causing the burst abdomen so it is a picture of burst abdomen okay what is the classification of surgical pathology of suturing okay the superficial and revealed deep and concealed and complete and revealed superficial occurs when the skin stitches are removed with separation of skin and subtense layer only that is superficial 
whereas deep the separation of the layer of the abdomen wall with the exception of the skin if not recognized while the patient is in the hospital the patient will develop incisional hernia the thing is the subcutaneous layer is after the subcutaneous layer the rectus sheath layer is got in uh, opened so the patient's skin will be intact the other things will be causing a incisional hernia that is a deep and concealed part whereas complete and resolved, uh, revealed part is the total is up to from the skin to the peritoneum it will be opened okay what are the clinical features there are no warning sign for impending decadence okay there will be no warning signs so the patient will be having nausea fever pain and discomfort okay the popping sensation in the wound after a bout of straining or coughing there will be a sensation bloating or popping sensation will be there what are the signs of wound decadence there will be serosanguinous discharge will be there from the wound any type of serosanguinous is a blood discharge pus discharge okay and other signs of wound so bowel or omentum will be protruding to the wound spontaneously after removal of sutures okay there will be open bowel directly visible to you so the third is the patient will develop shock because of hypothermia okay the patient will the intestine will be directly exposed to the environment should be causing a hypothermia the patient is picture is having the patient is having a loop ileostomy and the open wound here they try to close the abdomen layer with a bag so what are the treatment options okay there are two type of treatment option is there one is non operative that is conservative management and second one is operative management so what you will do in conservative management the patient is getting un unstable you can do a eviscation or you want to want to do a proper covering dressing okay you want to pack the you want to close the abdomen wound wound digestions so it cannot be exposed to the normal environment so you want to do a gauze packed dressing so the patient next thing is abdomen binder so you want to put this thing um, gauze and you want to do a dr regular dressing and you want to use to abdomen binder to compress the abdomen content so next thing is vacuum assisted closure what is vacuum assisted closure so it's a type of a bag you used to the closure of the abdomen wound degeneration is used in 10% of the total patient it reduces the significantly reduces the post operative infections it reduces the use of antibiotic prescription it can reduce the hospital acquired infections can be safely used in patient using anticoagulants okay the wound may be subsequently contracted or if the patient condition improves delayed operative closure may be performed the thing is after the wound got healed where the patient recovers the patient get stable you can do a secondary closure okay so if the wound is healing and there is your conservative management is okay then we can do a elective closure so what are the operative technique the main thing is resuscitation first the patient will die in shock hypothermia so you want to resuscitate the patient first so then is reassurance appropriate analgesic okay the patient should be nil per oral you should insert your ng tube so you want to give your gut as a rest gut rest should be given police catheter should be inserted okay then coverage proper antibiotic coverage all three gram positive gram negative anaerobes should be covered cover the wound with a sterile towel and transfer to the ot okay emergency operation for replacement of bowel and suturing of the wound the thing is that after the clean wound after you got dressing for a certain period of time when the wound got healed then you go for a closure so 
and the bubble or everything the motility is normal the patient got stable then you plan for a resuturing of your secondary wound so what is the operative procedure each coil of the wound intestine is washed okay gently and thoroughly abdomen cavity is totally washed in return placed back into the abdomen cavity okay then it should be layered by closed layer by by layer by layer technique or mass closure okay so it can be different techniques are done buttress suturing by tension suture abdomen wall is supported by many tail bandage or adhesive plaster so after closure of the wound you want to put a good abdomen binder and you want to put a abdomen plaster okay so post operatively you try to build up the patient to better wound healing okay so and treat and avoid your predisposing factors how to prevent okay pre operatively want to collect correct the precipitating factors manage causes of increased intra abdominal pressure so you want to relieve the distended bowel should be relieved when you are in the intraoperative period and post operatively put a ng tube and bladder you want to put a foley catheter to relieve your intra abdominal pressure omit medication like steroid steroid will not uh, will be causing more infection so you can the, there will be increased chances of bust abdomen prophylactic antibiotics should be given gi compression the rail tube insertion in case of intestinal obstruction perioperatively the patient should have a proper peritoneal lavage okay it should be cleaning with betadine and normal saline 2 3 3 washes at least required for a uh, peritoneal lavage choice of suture non absorbable is best for closure of abdomen whether it's a proline okay or pds okay tension flea crusher okay follows jenkins rule okay jenkins rule is 1 is to 4 the uh, full length of the wound should be covered by four times of suture material okay mass closure technique include peritoneum plus rectal sheath in closure continuous suture is can be used suture should be four times the length of the incision okay and the bite should be 1 cm the wound edge at 1 cm interval latestly they are trying for 0.5 cm interval okay good surgical technique and principle should be followed post operatively prevention of wound sepsis okay manage causes of increased intra abdominal pressure and gi distension so whenever you are seeing the wound open wound appropriately you should manage the wound digestions and follow up okay thank you thank you